what are these kids in the city supposed to do as summer beckons? Well, I guess stay in the city and go have some fun in the playgrounds. Oh, what am I saying? Those remain closed down with yellow police caution tape. Just stay in the basement, kids, playing video games, even though not a single child has died in Canada from the virus. Not one. Well, sadly, it's official. In Ontario, there will be no summer camp for kids. But the question arises, why? Why would the government shut down sleepover camps for children? After all, the kids will be in the great outdoors. They'll be having fun in the sun, taking in all that glorious vitamin D. And when you crunch the numbers, there is zero risk. And get this, why does this government keep sleepover camps open for seniors? Homes where seniors are kept inside, homes that are responsible for 82% of all Canadian Wuhan virus deaths. That doesn't make sense. Hey, even Doug Ford's nephew wants to go to sleepover camp. Remember this exchange at a press conference last month? I even got a call from uh, Rob, Rob's son, 12 years old, my brother's son, saying, Uncle Doug, am I going to camp or not? And I told him, you know, I can't answer that. Well, how about in August? I said, I can't answer that. He goes, well, find out and get back to me right away. And I, I thought, really? I'm getting lobbied by my 12-year-old nephew, too. Yes, even the Premier's nephew is champing at the bit to go to camp. We'll all just have to wait a little longer. Besides, haven't you heard, folks? We're all in this together. Yeah, we're all in this together. And the check is in the mail. This is the biggest lie of all to emerge from the Wuhan virus pandemic, this business that we're all in this together. Because if you are someone of privilege, such as Premier Doug Ford or Prime Minister Justin Trudeau or Toronto Mayor John Tory, you can say one thing and do the precise opposite. Ford and Trudeau told us not to go to the cottage, then they buggered off to their swank cottages. John Tory tells us to wear a mask and socially distance, and then the maskless Tory poses for a photo op with 10 healthcare workers. Oh, and uh, no $880 fine here, folks. Not for dear old John, of course. This is the hypocrisy inherent to Ontario's summer camp clampdown. Do you really think the kids in Doug Ford's extended family are truly going to be denied the camping experience? After all, the Premier is one of those fortunate Ontarians. He has a big, beautiful lakeside cottage. So members of the Ford family, they'll be able to go swimming and go canoeing and go hiking. And as for your kids, well, they can all just go and take a hike. And what are these kids in the city supposed to do as summer beckons? Well, I guess stay in the city and go have some fun in the playgrounds. Oh, what am I saying? Those remain closed down with yellow police caution tape. Just stay in the basement, kids, playing video games, even though not a single child has died in Canada from the virus. Not one. And check this out. A grand total of 33 people aged 19 and younger had to go to the hospital. Two of them went into ICU and both recovered. So again, not a single fatality for anyone 19 and under. That's why we've launched a new website, opensummercamp.com. Please sign our petition and I'll deliver this to Premier Ford. And no, this is not a no-hoper, folks. Indeed, despite our limited resources, we've actually been able to move the needle on Wuhan virus issues. For example, check out Roxham Road, if you remember when we were allegedly shutting down the borders and we did at the the bridges the official crossings in canada although not the airports of course roxham road remained open but my colleague kian bexty and i we paid some visits to roxham road and i think we embarrassed the government to do the right thing check it out today canada and the united states are announcing a reciprocal arrangement where we will now be returning irregular migrants who attempt to cross anywhere at the Canada-US border. And then we had that surreal high park wall. Yes, John Tory was channeling Berlin post Second World War when he fenced off High Park because he was worried that Trontonians would come in droves to smell the cherry blossom trees. I swear, check that out. Let's channel Ronald Reagan circa 1987 and uh, put up our posters asking John Tory, Mr. Mayor, tear down this wall. Isn't that beautiful? We're standing up for our freedom, officer. Uh, I'm just gonna have to take down the sign, okay? 
Oh, don't you believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression? I'm just going to pull out a knife and just take down the sign, sir. Oh, pull out a knife. Yes. you have a pair of scissors or anything to cut the uh, I, I don't know. Okay, if you can just step back, sir, I don't want Power to... Power to the people. I just want you, to... you don't want to stab me. Okay, then. Yeah, and days after that was posted, folks, the walls, they came tumbling down. And then you remember we did a little report on the Raptors practice facility opening up? Yeah, multi-million dollar athletes employed by multi-billion dollar corporations. They could go play indoors, but golf courses, the ultimate social distancing sport, was to remain closed? Hmm, that, I didn't get that, but check it out. It looks like certain classes of individuals are going to be able to pursue their sports. And no, I don't mean those who want to play golf, which is the ultimate social distancing, non-contact sport outdoors in hundreds and hundreds of acres. Nope, the golf courses are still closed and so are the tennis courts. They're closed as well, but get a load of this. The NBA is going ahead with practices, but why? What, what is the difference? Why can't the common man and woman do the same? And the very next day, folks, the golf courses were announced they were gonna be open for Victoria Day weekend. And finally, drive-in churches. You remember the Church of God in Little Elmer, Ontario? Remember how law enforcement was bullying them, saying there was going to be big fines, uh, even though there was absolutely no danger being done? Well, the parishioners kept coming, and check it out. What is the problem? The people in this Church of God, they are staying in their vehicles. They keep their windows rolled up. They are listening to the sermon via an FM radio frequency. I mean, not even the collection plate is being passed around. This is social distancing to the nth degree. Everybody is in a hermetically sealed vehicle. So what's the problem? Nobody's going inside the church. And I can tell you after a couple of weeks of coverage, those drive-in churches are now allowed by Premier Ford to operate. And the pastor's son himself said, it was thanks to Rebel News and our coverage of the issue. So there you go, a big Steve Lombardi pack on our collect pat on our collective backs there. So to recap, there is zero health reason to close down the summer camps, and it will possibly destroy a number of those great institutions. It will ruin plans for many families, but my bigger point is this, what's going to happen to those kids come summertime? Bumming around streets and alleys, not parks and playgrounds, of course. And as if that won't be more dangerous. And seriously, if you're wealthy, like Doug Ford or John Torrey or Justin Trudeau, you surely have your own version of a summer camp, don't you? Like a glorious private cottage on a lake. So these leaders, they don't need summer camps for their kids. Summer camps are for the commoners who don't have the coin to afford recreational property. Well. Enough is enough. Again, please go to our newest petition. That's opensummercamp.com. Opensummercamp.com. Let your voice be heard and let's get camps open again and let's get our kids back to camp. Enough with this one law for me and one law for thee way of governance. Just because a child is not part of the entitled class, there's no reason to deny him a camp experience Especially, like I've said over and over, the science indicates there is no health risk to begin with. So please sign our petition, and in the weeks ahead, I will personally deliver it to Premier Doug Ford. Thank you so much. Hey folks, let's make our voices heard. Go to opensummercamp.com. That's opensummercamp.com. I'm aiming for 25,000 signatures. When I get close to it, I'm gonna deliver this Petition to the Premier himself.